Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim, and today we want to talk about the Tetrix Rack and Pinion Linear Slide Pack. This is one of the specialty parts that we offer on the max uh, section of our parts, a la carte parts, but uh, it also can be used for the prime. Um, but it's one that maybe people aren't as familiar with and maybe aren't as comfortable using. So I want to go over that a little bit today so that everybody kind of has an idea and uh, maybe get some ideas on how they can use this. Um, one of the first things I want to make sure everybody realizes is that the pack does come with um, some very uh, brief instructional uh, visual images that kind of show some basic uh, ideas on how it can be used with Max. Uh, that's the first thing. And then I want to kind of cover what comes in the pack. There are four, uh, three different um, types of items in the pack. We start with our rack. Uh, piece um, that it functions as a rack, but also the slide piece. There's four of those. We have four pieces of what we call our slide bearing that is part of the pack. And then we have our pinion gear. Now, sometimes, and this is why we call it, um, people may be familiar with the idea of a, of a rack and pinion system, and, and that's kind of where this gets its name. You have a, a um, pinion gear that engages with the rack, and the main function of, of that type of a, of a device or mechanism is, mechanism is to convert rotational motion into linear motion. Um, everybody understands it's pretty easy to put a wheel on a, on a motor and, and get rotational motion, but sometimes if you only have motors, it's, it's not quite as clear on how to convert that motion into a linear motion because rotational motion doesn't always work for what we want to build. And that's where the linear slide really comes into um, a really uh, good use, is to um, put that kind of a device in place. Um, so let's kind of show you how it goes together. Um, you see that this is a piece of a max channel, and we know the familiar hole pattern. But what we want to do is that first we want to actually mount our slide bearing into um, the channel. And I, I, I chose just a single piece of channel so that you could see that in the hole pattern, we want to make sure that we put this slide bearing in the 12 o'clock position of that hole pattern. Not, it would go in any of the hole patterns, but it's very important for spacing that it goes into the top hole or the 12 o'clock position uh, of the open channel. And that bearing needs to be parallel to the edge of that open piece of channel. So if you put it together like that, what you'll end up with is a piece of a channel like this that the slide then will go in uh, with the rack side down. And uh, what I've done here is I've actually left these loose, and I did that on purpose because one of the things that you want to make sure of when you put this together, um, this is just one of the tips that you'll need to be aware of, is that if you don't get those slide bearings parallel to this surface, then that rack will be in a bind as it goes through multiples and it will uh, cause extra friction and it won't work very well. So um, what you want to make sure that you, you do when you mount this, I always try and uh, initially position my slide bearings in, I, but I don't tighten them all the way down. I leave them loose and you saw that when I, that actually will rotate around. So when I put them in loose, then I actually put my uh, slide in place and then I can hold that down. I can put some pressure there that, that makes sure that I've got even pressure all, all the way through. And then I can take my wrench and I can go ahead and tighten those the rest of the way down. And when I do that, then that will stay in place and I can take my thumb and I can make sure that it slides back and forth freely. Now, once you get that in place, then it's a simple matter. You can take another piece of channel and you can put it on top. Uh, or in any position, and then you can bolt it down uh, directly to um, the, the slide, and it just uh, bolts right down. So that's a pretty easy um, demonstration of how that actually goes together. Now let me show you um, an example of that that's uh, pre-built. This is an example of a mechanical example that I did just to um, show this kind of a motion. I have my two channels in the back, my max channels, that I've uh, actually mounted my, my slides. And what I've done then is I've mounted my racks to prime pieces. And this is where you see that you can use this with either 
uh, max or prime. But I have a, a mechanical rotation here that I'm actually winching. I could put a motor there, but uh, I just to show it a little bit, I've um, just made a mechanical crank. And as I move that crank in that rotational motion, you can see my pinion gears are engaging that slide and I'm getting linear motion. Um, so that's kind of where that uh, comes in play. You could use it as a lifting me mechanism, a mechanism to uh, move something back and forth across a, a horizontal surface. There's lots of uses where this comes into play. Um, it's not really difficult to use um, if you kind of remember some of the basics. Again, you want to make sure that you don't uh, get those slides in a bind um, by um, mounting your, your um, bearings loose put your slide in, then tighten it down. Um, you want to make sure that when you, um, and I forgot to show you this, when you put the, the, um, the actual uh, bearing in, you're going to, again, through the, um, this is why it's important for the, the spacing, is that you want to make sure that when you mount the, an axle through that center hole on our beam, and the pinion gear goes through that, if you have these in the top hole, then that pinion gear will uh, mesh perfectly with our rack when we put it in. So that's one of the, um, the ways that you would, you would mount that. It's not the only way, but that's one of the ways that you would do that. And again, to make sure that the spacing is correct. Um, again, not necessarily that difficult if you kind of remember some of the basics, but I would encourage you to explore it, try it on some of your robots, see if you can't get some different mechanisms going and and uh, maybe explore a new part that you hadn't tried before. So uh, hope you found that ben uh, beneficial, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing some of those robots that you guys build. Have a great day and come back and see us.